Chris Forrester of St. Patrick's Athletic. Um, I might take you back almost a year now to last season's uh, FAI Cup final. Obviously a great day for you um, as a club and also individually. I mean, you scored a wonderful goal that day as well. But um, I was talking to Lee Desmond a few months ago, just after he joined Sacramento, and he described it as the kind of best day of his life. You'd won, won it before for Pats. So how do you reflect on it now, that uh, like winning it a second time and how maybe how different that feels winning it a second time as opposed to that first time? Yeah, so the first time we won it, the club hadn't won it for so many years, so it was it was, all, it was amazing to do it for them. Um, I felt like I was almost doing it for them. This time I was doing it for you know my family and my little girl was at the game and stuff like that. Uh, Lee Desmond was right. It was the best day, best day of his life because it was unbelievable. Um, it was the best day of mine too. Uh, everything about the day was just so perfect. Atmosphere, stadium, uh, set up, everything was just perfect. Um, yeah, it's the best day of my life, to be honest. Yeah, and obviously a lot of uh, upheaval followed. Obviously, with Stephen O'Donnell uh, moving on to Dundalk. So, as a club, like how did you, or I suppose as a player as well, who had worked with him and you know you'd made so much progress under him. So, how did you respond or feel about that at the time? Yeah, massively upset. Um, you know, we just got him won the cup, won the cup, second in the league, and it's, you know it's not ideal to be then going losing your manager. Um, it's going into a new season, you're thinking. I'll start again, not a rebuild. So um, yeah, I was awfully upset and disappointed. And obviously Tim Clancy has come in and you've started to get on to a really, really good run. Obviously we'll talk about Europe and uh, the CSK Sofia tie a little bit later on, but what was his initial mes messaging kind of coming in the first time? Um, I think it was just, he had his own sort of approach. Um, you know, it was a whole brand new slate for everybody. Um, and I think recently we've, we've seen a team that has you know, progressing uh, nicely. Uh, the, we're gelling all perfectly. The, the lads that we brought in through the transfer window has been, been very effective as well. So, um, yeah, just, just the message was that, you know, we're getting down to work and it's a new season, it's a new slice. So. Yeah, uh, there was a little bit of an issue with inc inconsistency uh, prior to the European run. And then after the CSK, Sofia, I think you've won five on the trot now. Did the European run in a way, I mean, people might look at it and think when you're playing in Europe, it can be a bit of a distraction, but did you actually find that it kind of galvanised you a little bit? Yeah, I think uh, it brought us together as a team, you know, and like you said, in the CSK game, we were, we were hard done by in that game. I think a couple of decisions went against us and, you know, that kind of galvanised us and yeah, you're right, it can be a bit of a distraction, but it was a, it was a healthy distraction for us because we weren't doing too well in the league, we were hit and miss, and then, like, like you said, since we come back from the European game, so we can... We've been right on it, and the, the momentum is on our side, and we're feeling good. Yeah, and obviously you mentioned additions as well. So Atom Kai being one, Tice Timmermans as well has been, uh, you know, being kind of central in midfield as well beside you, and uh, also Barry Cotter coming in at wing back. Uh, how have you found a their additions, and also the change of system as well to this back three? Yeah, it's been it's been massive. Like you said, the lads the let's say you've named, and we have Hardy Brockbank and you know Danny Rogers as well come in. Um, and they're all they've all they've all brought something to the table. Um, the change in system is it's been working well for us to be fair, you know, we look pretty solid. We're getting a few goals and you know, it's it's tailored kinda of to everyone's kind of strengths. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been really positive. Yeah, and some of the younger players getting international recognition with the twenty ones as well must be great. But uh, one I did want to pick out was Joe Redmond who's been having a stormer of a season. Uh, what have you made but kind of playing in front of him? Yeah, no, Joe's, Joe's unbelievable, to be fair. You don't forget that he's so young as well. Um, he carries himself so well on the pitch. Um, he's been made captain of the club as well, which is which is a huge honour for him. Um, and, you know, I think he could do anything he wants to in the game. It's just whether he wants to, you know, put in the work and, you know, continue on the trajectory that he's on. But, yeah, he could do anything in the game, really. Yeah, and you mentioned the cup uh, win last year, obviously being kind of the greatest day of your life. Obviously, co going out early as the as the defending champions must have been a massive disappointment. But it will allow you to focus on trying to make it into that top top three and trying to get ahead of Dundalk, maybe even catch Derry City. Or, um, but uh, is it a blessing in disguise in a way? I know you wouldn't want to look at uh, look at it that way, but in a way, does it just allow you to focus on that one final target now? Yeah, it probably probably is. You know, gives us that opportunity then just to focus solely on the league. Whereas you have Derry that are, you know, trying to get to a cup final. And you know, Dundalk only went out the other day, but you know that can be a bit of a an upsetting thing for them. And you know, you don't know how they're feeling about it. So our main focus is just one hundred percent on the league now. And you know, that's not the case for all the other teams because you have 
competitions elsewhere, so they might be might work to our advantage and might not. But you know, every little advantage that you can get in this little kind of run in, you'd be trying to you'd be trying to get your hands on, yeah. Yeah, and one final one. Um, have you been keeping in touch with Dara Burns since he moved across to MK Dons? And also, did you give him any advice? Because you'd been across, obviously, to Peterborough and also up in Scotland with Aberdeen uh, previously, and you, you know the highs and lows that come with going across the UK. So did you speak to him at all about maybe what to expect and maybe pitfalls or anything like that? A couple of little things. Nothing too serious now. You don't want to be kind of bringing the, bringing the kid <laughs> down with too many sub stories. Um, but, you know, just little things. and. You know, Dara has a good a good family around him, good people looking after him, a uh, good head in his shoulders, so you know, not too worried about him. Same with James. James good family. Uh, you know, moving to Italy he's mo- he's very far off. Like it's not as if you can just jump on a flight and jump home. Uh, so he'll need to he'll need to do a lot of work and just staying happy and staying positive. because um, homesickness will come regardless how he feel. Um yeah, no, I think the two lads will be fine. They're, they're two mature lads, you know, and they're very experienced. Yeah, certainly. I suppose with James, I mean, the weather is going to be <laughs> the weather and the food and yeah, all the other lot, things that come with it. A lot of positives to go with, with it, but uh, yeah, now the two lads will be fine, I say. And you know, they seem like they're doing really well at the clubs as well. Right, thanks a million for your time, Chris, and best luck for the running.